People sometimes think or say that there's no sex in Jane Austen. And indeed, sometimes TV and film adapters feel the need to put it in. <laughs> um, but it's there, actually, reading between the lines. Um, it's really clear in Pride and Prejudice that Lydia Bennett has been off for over a month, and she's only just 16, living in an, uh, an apartment in London with a well-known rake. And she's been living with him. And she comes back to uh, Longbourn uh, full of fondness for him. And it is a picture of a kind of sexual infatuation, a teenage sexual infatuation. And were to think of this uh, when we sometimes are invited to read between the lines of what is going on or what has gone on in Jane Austen's novels. Um, in Sense and Sensibility, uh, uh, for instance, um, there's, the, there's the both kind of chilling and hilarious sketch of the marriage of Mr and Mrs Palmer. Um, and uh, Mr Palmer has, because he has, Eleanor realises, this odd prejudice in favour of attractive young women, he's married an idiot. Um, and of course... He's with her forever, if he's a gentleman. There's no divorce. I mean, I often think liberal divorce laws may have been good for society, but they were a disaster for the English novel because you, 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 you've got to make these decisions forever. And you make them on the basis sometimes of not knowing the other person very well at all. And Mr Palmer has married Mrs Palmer, and clearly they have a happy married life in one way. She's pregnant, actually, in the first part of Sense and Sensibility, um, but as she sort of enjoys saying, you can't get rid of me now. Mr. Bennett, why has he married such a fool as Mrs. Bennett? Why has such a witty and intelligent man married her? Well, he married her when she was young, we're later told, and attractive. And if you're a gentleman, the only way you get to sleep with the woman you fancy is by marrying her. Even Mr Darcy's famously disastrous <laughs> uh, first proposal to Elizabeth Bennet has, I think we're supposed to infer, sexual passion behind it. He says, you must allow me to tell you how ardent, ardently I admire and love you. Ardently. And then he goes on to tell her all the reasons why it's a bad idea <laughs> that, that he should marry her. But he's got to marry, he's got to have her, you know? I mean, he can only get her by marrying her, even though the marriage is, from his haughty point of view, very unwise. So I think you feel the sexual passion in his blundering approach. So sexual desire is, is there. You're expected to understand it's there. It's there even, actually... Funnily enough, in that, probably in the most famous sentence that Jane Austen ever wrote, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. And people don't kind of always pick up on that last part of it. In want of, need a wife, but wants a wife. They want a wife because if you're Mr Bingley, the only way you can have a sex life is by getting married. Um, Mr Elton in Emma, um, the ghastly, smooth-talking Mr Elton, um, who is living alone and not much liking it, we're told, by the novel. He wants a wife because, of course, he wants the status and perhaps he wants children. I doubt it with Mr Elton. But he wants a sex life. And Jane Austen expects her readers to understand that without actually having to be explicit about it.